Hey guys, it is Insetic with Blank Tester here. Mm-hmm. 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 And welcome to the next game we'll be covering. This is White Out. I thought we'd, you know, introduce the winter season with some winter extreme games. So, White Out is a 2002 snowmobile racing game published by Konami. Every time you think you've played the last Konami Extreme Sports game, you discover another one. That's like Insetic's 10th law. By I don't now, think but that should point. be another law. No, it's just something that happens. Yeah, it's just... Um, so, you know, it's kind of a standard combination of racing and tricking. Oh man, Corey Feldman! Oh yeah, this. it's Corey Feldman, guys! Look at that! Oh, it's totally Corey Feldman. Oh man, Corey Wood Feldman. Yeah, so... <clears throat> You know, obviously I'll introduce the gameplay and stuff when we get there, but we're gonna jump right into career mode. Every, uh, every person has, you know, different strength and ability stats. Strength is how easily you get pushed around. Agility is how well you do tricks, like how fast you do them. Alright. And you're gonna see for reasons apparent over the series that I'm gonna pick someone really good at tricks. Cause otherwise I wouldn't be landing a lot of them. Hmm. Let's just roll with that. So, we're gonna pick the pink-haired chick, hard. you know? I mean, serious, I swear, I swear, man, I swear it's not because she's a hot babe. It's totally because of that tricking stat, you know? Sure. Yeah, I swear, guys, believe me. Mm. All right, when you start out, you have three sleds to choose from. S snowmobiles, sleds, whatever. Yeah. Um, which have different, like, acceleration speed and handling stats, basically. Uh, you might notice that the game's taking a while to load anything and everything. Yeah, these guys only start moving after... <laughs> like... Waiting? Waiting? Oh, there we go. All uh, I was doing was changing the color. Yeah. Which... <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh... <laughs> we're in for a little bit of a treat here, folks. I really like gonna the be... music in this menu screen. This is pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. This could be good on a mixtape. I wonder who made this. Yeah. Who made this beat. Mm. Does this does this have uh, maybe licensed music? Let's see uh, if they say yeah, it has like licensed that. music, but the music is kind of low, and there are announcers who will be listening to. Uh. It's one of those games where commentators, you know, talk over everything you do, and it sounds really stilted, like like know. as though two internet nerds were just talking over games and yeah, yeah. like. Like, who did I pick? I picked, I picked Fio. So it's like, Fio does a heel clicker. Fio is in the lead. So Fio like, uses that nitro boost. But the audio stitching is not as bad as, say, a certain other game that we know and love. Yeah, and love. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Trojan Park, the host of today's Snowcross Challenge. I'm Johnny Capaletti, here with my main man, Big Lee Raman. Now, with some words from the race favorite, we go to Lee Rareman. Chris, you've been amazing here. Why are you so good at this venue? I've been in the zone lately, and this should be a piece of cake, Lee. Well, there you have it. Let's get back to the booth. Johnny, you could cut the tension with a spork. Damn, with well, a spork? Well, there you have it. That's your quality of announcers, whoever. Oh, looks like I forgot to hit the X button. Or maybe I did, and you just take one second to start going. I don't know why. But, alright. Whiteout is a combination of racing and tricking, and, oh, you see there I do... I do the beautiful accidentally do the same trick again, even though I release the button trick. You know, it's my favorite. I yeah. bust it out all the time. Uh. So, ultimately, at the end of the race, you gotta get first place. But along the way, you could do tricks, collect power-ups to help push you in the lead. There's a speed power-up and a shield power-up. Speed power-up gives you nitro. Shield protects your health bar. I'll talk about the health in a little bit. But otherwise, you know, in the main events, it's about getting that first place and maybe doing some tricks and picking up some props along the way. Because props is basically like, it gives you extra money at the end. Okay. You know, it, so there's I, some exchange rate. Yeah, I mean, you saw, you know, you bought a sled at the start. You're going to buy new parts for your sled. You're going to buy new sleds. So you um, win races and do lots of tricks and, you know, do a little bit of level and in interaction with stuff you can knock over and you get more money there. It seems like your sled has really, really, like, it seems really sensitive. Yeah. 
like you just tapping a little bit left oh right. man i hit that ultimate accidentally do the same trick again trick i told you that's my signature move is it now? i'm busting it out all the time all right so let's look at the things that are on your your hud you know you see your lap and the total time in the race and such place. yeah your place props. the props a little mini map of the course on the bottom right but then you see the health bar and health either doesn't matter at all or is really important because you suddenly just lose it all and die. Not die, I mean, you'll just, you know, reset and keep going. But if you... <coughs> Sorry about that. If other riders bump into you or you bump into the walls or such, your health bar kind of goes down. And if it goes all the way down, you, you know, fall over and get reset. And that's based on your strength stat, how much you, how resilient you are to getting Yeah. Hit. Except, of course, you... Usually, if you run into something, you're running right into it, or you don't finish a trick anyway, and so you're going to crash anyway. And so health means nothing except for when sometimes you just you and an AI just get caught up on each other, and it just drains and you fall over. So really, so really, in, in most of the time, you don't want to be hitting anybody anyways. Yeah. So your strength stat doesn't really mean anything because the times you do hit things, you're just gonna crash anyways. Yeah. It, yeah, it's one of those games. And so, you see that I pick, I'm picking up the boost pickups, which you can store up to three of those, the nitro boost. That's kinda nice. Yeah, and then you hit the circle button, at least on PS2, to use it, and you get a bit of a speed boost and it blurs your screen. Now actually, in this video recording, the screen blur looks okay, but when yeah, I'm playing it, it on my TV, it looks horrendous. I cannot see where I'm going. Maybe it has something to do with the frame rate or something. Yeah, maybe. The checkered flag comes out, Theo Sorbo wins. Amazing! We got some bonus racing coming up after this, Johnny. Okay, so we got some bonus racing. Bonus racing. What does that mean? Uh, if you get in first place and you continue on, you also unlock a bonus race. Every uh, level in every circuit has its own bonus race where you race the level again, but usually with one less lap and trying to do a specific challenge. Okay. So this one is what? Uh, this one is jump through all the hoops. You'll see jump 12 hoops and you'd unlock a new trick to do. Huh. Um, you didn't see any hoops in the main level, but in this bonus race they add in all these extra like point collectibles and hoops, like flaming hoops that you jump through. Uh, that's really good. Yeah, which will give you, you know, more points, uh, kind of help out, you know, the props that you get. So it looks like the little lights floating around the, around the, the special thing, pickup indicators, are the thing that, like, indicate whether or not you can pick it up. Yeah. But, like, if, if, the, the icon will just sit there, even if somebody already has that yeah, if the AI collects something, you'll lose the, the lights around the pickup, and you can't get that. Okay. Like, at least for, like, five seconds or such. It has to, you know, respawn. So what happens if you go through all 12 hoops in this one, but you don't get first place? You fail and have to do it again. Like, it? you need to get first, and you see it's only two laps, but it, it's jumping through hoops. I'm speeding it up, because it's, just boring it's jumping through hoops. And also in this one, if you miss one, you gotta start over, which Blank Tester can attest to the fact that, like, I was doing pretty well one time, and then I just slightly veered off to the left, kept veering off to the left, fucked up. Like, this is gonna be one of those games where you see me doing well at it, but it took a good little bit to start doing well at it. You had to practice. Yeah. I had to... Because I, I, I remember when you first started playing the game, you told me that the game was 90% bullshit because... The difficulty is... Yeah. They're, Damn, this track is pretty dope. Yeah, it's like... What was it? Was it World Tour? Where, like, 90% of the game was shit, but then it had great menu music? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, it's gonna come up later. There was a point or two where I quit on the game, but, like, two days later, I was like, fuck it, I can do this. I can do this. You guys need to see this. You know, so you're gonna see the full game... Even if I start sticking multiple levels in a video, because that was a level, all right. I feel like, and I didn't get around to this, you know, for a game that really advertises its tricking system, not really advertises, but, like, you could do tricks and then trick modifiers to do bigger tricks and such. Mm -hmm. For a game that has that as a mechanic, you should have good enough jumps early on that we can see those tricks. 
Yeah. But, but aside from maybe one jump in like the third level or such, you don't get to do a lot of the bigger tricks until later on the game because the first few levels are kind of, you know, low to the ground yeah. with their ramps. So that was a stadium level. Along with the stadium levels, the game has cross-country levels, kind of more outdoor ones, kind of like Rainbow Studios games. You know, okay. they have the stadium ones and such. So you'll see one of those next time when we return to Wide Out. Wide Out.